What's up guys, Dr. Jared here, and in this video I want to show you some simple things that you can do to eliminate muscle knots between your shoulder blades. Now, if you clicked on this video, I'm assuming you know what a muscle knot is. It's those areas that you get kind of in your back, your upper back, between your shoulders, up into your neck that are just tight and tense and balled up and painful and if someone pushes on them maybe that's a little bit tender those are muscle knots there's a couple of different theories out there as to what exactly they are the most prevalent is it's a it's a muscle that is in a contracted state so that muscle gets in this tightened contracted state and then doesn't let go or doesn't release and it stays there for a long time that's what causes that fatigue and tension and pain that you eventually feel in those areas and so because of that fortunately if we can get that muscle to release if we can do some things that are going to help it to relax you're going to start to feel a lot better that's exactly what I wanted to share with you in this video I've got quite a few things that I'm going to throw your way that hopefully are going to promote some relaxation promote some strengthening promote some better posture and ultimately help you to feel a lot better. My goal is that you feel a lot better by the end of this video than you do right now. That being said, let's get into it. The first thing that we want to do is get that trigger point to relax and release. The ways that I like to do that are with heat. We're going to heat up the area, get a lot of good blood flow in there, and then some sort of a trigger point release technique, or also known as acupressure. Basically, we're going to put pressure on that spot to help that area to release. Now, you'll see that I've got quite a few things right here. I'm going to run through all of these. If you're interested, I'm just going to mention this one time so I don't have to say it over and over again. They're all linked in the description down below. Okay, so let's get to work. The first thing that we've got to do is put heat on the area. This is is an electric heating pad that we use at my house. Basically, all you do is put that on the area. You can lay down on top of that, hold it there. You're going to stay on that for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, really good heating pad. We really like that one. My wife, she's the one who gets these all the time. She didn't necessarily love to be tethered with a cord. She was like, well, I need a way that I can heat that spot up and still remain mobile. And so she actually found these. Um, inside of this are a lot of really small ceramic beads. You throw this in the microwave, you heat it up, and then you can kind of drape that over one side and put it, you know, sorry if that was right on the microphone, drape that over one side and put it in those areas where that heat needs to go. She liked this one a little bit better than like a rice bag. She didn't necessarily love the way that the rice bag made her made her clothes and her hair smell and so that's why we found this one right here but uh, either one of those works great you're gonna stay on that for about 10 to 15 minutes most people find significant relief even just from that but what we can do is let's take it a step further let's show you some release techniques now the one that I like the simplest the easiest grab a tennis ball you can also use a lacrosse ball or a racquetball um, but what you're going to do is lay that down on the ground and then just put that kind of underneath your back you can kind of adjust where you're laying on that until you find that spot that is maybe a little more tender that area that's knotted up and then you're just going to hold it there you're just going to stay on that spot for at least 30 seconds sometimes it takes up to 60 sometimes it takes even up to two minutes your objective is you hold it there until you feel that knot just kind of melt away and release. Now, I understand it's not always convenient to lay down on the floor. If you have like a high back chair, maybe you're at work, you can put this between your back and the chair and kind of work on it that way. But what I like to do is you can even take a sock and I'm just gonna put the tennis ball in the bottom of the sock. And now it's kind of, you know, that arrangement right there. What you can do is lean up against the wall. So I would put that over my back and then and you can move that up down in out wherever you need to to find that knotted up area and then you can use that to lean back into the wall until you find that spot I usually have one yep, right there until you find that spot where again it's a little more tender you kind of feel that's where it's painful that's where it's knotted up and then we're gonna stay on that spot Again, usually it takes about 30 seconds. Sometimes it can take a little bit longer, up to about two minutes on that spot, just until you feel it release, until you feel it melt away. After you take pressure off of it, you should feel a lot better. Now, if you live in a house where muscle knots are common, like this, um, I even have one of these, this is called a Theracane. This is a 
basically a muscle knot release tool that you can buy again linked down below my wife is on this quite regularly and basically you can see it's got kind of the big cane shape right here it's got this knot on the end or the ball on the end and what you're going to do is put that right on those muscle knots so again this is just a little bit easier way that you can find those areas um, this is a little bit smaller it's a little more precise you can get a little bit better pressure on it once you find it and again the parameters are still the same with that so you'd hold that for about 30 seconds or until you get that muscle knot to kind of melt away and then you're ready for the next steps another way that we can promote relaxation and release in that muscle knot is to contract it and fatigue it and then appreciate the relaxation afterwards and so that's what I want to show you here are two of my favorite techniques to do that this first one is going to be for the muscle knots in your upper trapezius and levator scapulae kind of the muscle knots that are maybe a little bit higher between your shoulder blades what we're going to do is just again contract all those muscles in those areas to get it to release so what I want you to do try this out with me it's kind of a few steps on this follow along what we're going to do if I have my muscle knot over here on my right side I'm going to elevate my shoulder so shoulder comes up and then pull it backwards so shoulder comes back head goes up to the ceiling now we're gonna side bend over towards the shoulder and then I'm going to rotate away so my face goes up there and basically what you should feel we're gonna contract and hold one two three four five and then relax what you should feel is all the muscles in that area are contracted and balled up so let's go through it one more time up and back with the shoulder up with the head over with the ear and then rotate the face away from it until we get a good contraction right in that area all of those muscles hold it nice and tight for about three to five seconds and then relax and then I recommend people do this about five to ten times but after that you should notice a significant release in that in that area of tension now if your muscle knots are a little bit lower again that's that works great for the ones that are a little bit higher in your back if they're a little bit lower between your shoulder blades I like the scapular pinches for that what we're going to do is you can sit or stand with both elbows in at your side and bent at a 90 degree now I'm gonna just rotate the back of my hands towards the wall back here behind me and then squeeze my shoulder blades together as much as I can so I don't want the motion to be just right here in your arms you're gonna pull back and then you're gonna pull your shoulder blades together Together, hold that for three to five seconds in that position and then come back and again you should appreciate a really good contraction in those muscles in those rhomboids and in those traps between your shoulder blades but if we do that for again about 10 repetitions you should notice a significant improvement afterwards for most people the cause of these muscle knots is the range of motion limitations people are really limited in the mobility in their spine between their shoulder blades and strength limitations so let me show you a few exercises to address each of those for the mobility we're gonna start right here on the foam roller um, this is my medium density foam roller six inch diameter 36 inch length also linked down below we're gonna mobilize our thoracic spine if you don't have a foam roller I'm going to show you how to do it over a chair right after this and so what we're going to do is put that foam roller perpendicular to your spine and then when I start off I put the foam roller pretty high with my hands I'm going to cut behind my head and then bring your elbows forward that protracts your shoulder blades out of the way and then you can get right on those vertebrae and usually there it was I usually get one or two cracks with this as I go up and down and usually what I'll do is I'll spend about 30 to 60 seconds like this again that's pressure right on those vertebrae but if I want to mobilize it and actually promote some motion through that area it's going to look a little bit different what I would do also is now let your elbows flop to the side so let them fall down and now as I go over that foam roller you'll see that my back isn't rigid anymore but it's kind of falling down I'm letting my head fall down towards the floor as I go over it I'm letting that foam roller extend my spine or my spine is extending over the top of that foam roller to promote a little more mobility in that area this might be kind of tender the first time you get on it but as you continue to do it you'll notice that it starts to release and relax and those vertebrae become more mobile now um, and again about oh, 30 to 60 seconds like that usually I just set a two-minute timer for patients in my clinic 
If you don't have the foam roller, what you can do is sit in a chair. I want a chair that doesn't rock or pivot or swivel. It's got a nice firm back, and then the, everything else looks very similar to the foam roller. You're going to clasp your hands behind your head and then extend right back over the top of the chair. And it's that top of the chair that's providing that support and that you're mobilizing your spine over the back of it. You can slide your hips forward to mobilize a little higher in your back. You can slide your hips backwards or sit up tall to mobilize a little bit lower in your back, but then all of the mechanics still look and feel the same. About 60 seconds or so is what I typically recommend here. And then what I like to do is let's follow that up with some stretching. My favorite stretch for this is going to be a cat camel yoga pose. You're gonna be down here on all fours. My hands are below my shoulders. My knees are below my hips. The first step is I'm going to tuck my chin into my chest and try to arch my back up towards the ceiling as high as I can just until I get a good stretch all through the back and all through the neck. Hold that for three to five seconds and then you're gonna come right back down. So now my belly is kind of sagging down towards the floor. I'm looking up with my head, my gaze is directed up. I'm gonna hold that for about three to five seconds and then come right back to that first position. And so there we go. And usually about, oh, three sets of about 10 to 20 reps on this feels really good for people. Finally, this last exercise is my favorite way to strengthen the muscles between your shoulder blades and in your upper back without any equipment. This is a wall angel. What you're going to do is back up to a wall. I want the back of your hips, your shoulder blades, and the back of your head all up against the wall. So we're in this really good posture. Now with my hands, I'm gonna get them into this position. I want your knuckles up against the wall if you can get them there. You're gonna hold that right there and then slide your knuckles up the wall as high as you can go all the way, maybe till the hands get together if you can, and then come right back down. Again, I'm maintaining those three points of contact in my spine. My knuckles are staying up against the wall and I'm sliding up and down. Three sets of 10 is a good number to shoot for. If 10 feels good, try to do another set. And if two sets of 10 feels good, I recommend that we go for about three sets of 10 reps on these wall angels. Now, as I mentioned before, this video was for muscle knots between your shoulder blades. If you get muscle knots in your neck and upper traps, those exercises look a little bit different. What you can do is click right here to check that video out. For some reason, YouTube thinks you might like this video from Tone and Titan, so check that out. See if YouTube's right. Click the circle right here to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already, and we'll see you again soon.